Hello everyone. I should say good afternoon. Yes, it's the hillbilly doing her favorite thing, making soap. Well, today we are making two and since it's around Valentine's Day, I thought we'd make a little, you know, girly type of soap that we're out of. Anyways, it's going to be a goat milk soap. And yes, the goat milk is in there. And all of my additives, this is um, extra virgin olive oil. I have the goat milk powder, cannelin clay, oatmeal powder, and on top right there is, yep, my favorite, uh, marshmallow root. Yes, the root. Okay. I have had several people ask me, why do I always put it in there and why is it my favorite? Well, it is a wound healer and a half. And it leaves like um, a film like Slippery Elm, which is another good one, but sometimes it doesn't like to play very well in soap. And sometimes it do, but I can add uh, more marshmallow root, which has awesome benefits. Um, <clears throat> it's a wound healer, like I said, and it leaves a film for, you know, um, like a bandage that you can't see. It goes right in there, scratches, psoriasis, eczema, any of that, you know, problems with your skin is, you know, a wound, if you will. So it puts it like a band-aid. And the properties of marshmallow root go in there and start its magical working on the healing process. Um, it is soothing and um, non-irritating so you don't have to worry about you know like uh, some herbs and other things that we like to use for a wound healer will you know like yikes uh, get it to uh, sting or something for a second well this doesn't I love using it works very very well in cold process soap uh, since we have uh, goat milk in here. It just makes it a very more luscious. Uh, I have aloe vera juice that I use for my wedding solution. I'm adding my lye to. I can't, you know, express enough about the marshmallow root. Yes, there's a lot of other benefits and what I get into if I'm just going to make a marshmallow root of our pure and simple line. I will get into it more in detail. But this year, yes, we're going to uh, <clears throat> refocus, if you will, and go more into depth on our herbs and why we use it in skin products. Yes, I use a lot of things to make tincture and whatnot. That is for my family. I do not sell it, and they're not going to, you know, get into that. But as for the skin, yes, that's what we will be teaching and talking about. Oh, uh, let's see. So, I will do the hot lye, put it in my hard oils and my butters, melt it that way, and then we do the same old, same old again. But I just wanted to reiterate on... The reason why I use marshmallow root and I get asked an awful lot so I will just keep continuing telling how good it is uh, slippery elm it works about the same you know with a uh, invisible bandage if you will um, and of course it is antimicrobial so anyways it is um, you know antibacterial uh, anti-fungal which is your yeast and other things so that's why it's good for like sealing if you didn't have these properties like vitamin E which everybody says it's really good for your skin which it is but if you have problems with your skin and you use that and it seals it 
you're sealing in whatever are natural flora, microbes, or fungi, you know, sealing it in. So that's why you don't use vitamin E like they used to think, oh, it's really good. So they would pinch uh, a little vi vitamin E pill, tablet, whatever, you know, gel, and they'd squeeze it on there. Um, you can't always depend on scrubbing all of, you know, bacteria and other microbes on your skin and then apply it. So, which is a good thought, but yes, you just don't know. So why take a chance? Um, use something that is um, antimicrobial, bacteria, yeast, you know, other you know, things. And that is what marshmallow root does. And so if you put it on and it seals, you know, to keep moisture in on your skin. And yes, even a leave or a rinse off product, because of the super fat, you had that tendency of getting that while you're scrubbing um, <clears throat> the properties on your skin. Yes, you could put it in lotion, which would be Awesome, especially for uh, psoriasis, eczema, dry skin, because you have cracks in your skin, and so it is a wound. Scratches or whatever, that would be awesome. But I add it into my soap, especially the cold process, and it's a whopping one, so you do have that tendency of getting some of it, especially when it is like a liquid bandage, if you will. You know, where it will, you know, put a, a, a nice layer on. So, that is the reason why we also use it in a rinse-off product. Enough of the yakking from the hillbilly. Okay. And I'm going to, I guess I should say before I do it, because I don't be putting on the funky music. Can't help it. Yes. I reuse my liner. But I turn it upside down so it's clean. So you see a little stain on there. That's on the other side from soap. Soap is clean. So it is on the outside. This is new in the inside. So I try to get two uses to keep costs down or whatever. And I know a lot of soap makers do that. But if you see something like this, yes, it's not dirty. It's just using the other side. Yes. That's what, you know, definition of, you know, with the hillbilly, you use what you have, and if you don't have it, you make it or find, you know, replacement. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. I'm enough of the yakking. <laughs>